Today is the video of all videos for golfers. We're going to discuss the most active muscles during your golf swing. I've made videos in the past discussing each muscles separately, but today we're going to bring it all together. So the rest of this video is going to be broken down into three separate parts. Part number one, we're going to discuss EMG data and explain why it's so important and how we can use it to better understand the most active muscles. Part two, we'll be explaining which muscles are the most active. In part three, we'll take you into the gym and show you some exercises that will be beneficial for your golf game. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end. And if you wanna skip around, there are chapters below, but I will say it does hurt the video being pushed out to other people. So I'd really love it if you skip around to hit that like button if you find value. I'll be honest, I'm pretty excited to discuss this data with you guys. So we're gonna head over to the YouTube studio and explain what EMG data is. We're here at the YouTube studio and I realize I haven't told you who I am. My name is Adam. I'm certified with Titleist in their TPI program. I also have a degree in exercise science. I've been personal training for over 10 years. Now, enough about me, let's get into EMG data. Now, EMG data, also known as electromyography, basically the measuring of the amplitude of a muscle contraction. From an exercise science perspective, this data can be helpful in discovering what muscles are the most active during different movements. In a lab setting, we connect these stickers to the muscles we wish to read the measurements on, and since our muscles contraction are controlled by the nervous system, we can read the electrical impulses in those muscles. Now, an experiment like this could hypothetically determine that the biceps brachii is the most active while using the easy bar. So anyone looking to develop the peak of the bicep a little bit more might want to mix in this type of curl. Also, this is not hypothetical. This is the actual study that I found for this example. EMG data can be a real useful tool when trying to determine which muscles are the most active. Now, I want to jump into what the most active muscles are during the swing, and there are different phases to this. And I'm going to explain and give a really cool visual of myself swinging and discussing this as we go through. The first phase of the golf swing is the back swing. So this is the takeaway. We find in this movement that we have the upper serratus, middle and upper trapezius, and the subscapularis in the upper body most active, whereas throughout the lower and core, we find the erector spinae, the obliques, the semimembranosus, and the long head and short head of the biceps femoris to be most active. This is gonna get really complicated if I explain each phase of the golf swing like this, where I list every muscle. So any of the quad muscles or any of the hamstring muscles, I'm going to categorize together. I'm also gonna take muscles like the rhomboids and the middle traps that have similar functions to retract shoulder blades. And I'm going to group those together because they play a very similar role and function. We can see in the forward swing, the two muscles, rhomboids and the trapezius, are both active, along with the pec major on the front side of our body. Now, the absolute most active muscle in any phase of the golf swing is here in our lower body, the upper and lower glute maximus, with 100 to 98% activation, along with the quad muscle. Now, in this acceleration phase of the golf swing where we pick up a huge amount of speed, this is where the pecs are the second most active muscle at any point during this golf swing, along with the upper portion of the serratus and the levator scapula. And in this acceleration phase for the lower body, we have the adductor magnus, which is on the inner side of our thigh, but we can also see that our obliques are pretty active here. Now there is early follow through and late follow through. I'm going to group these together here. We can see that the pecs are again, very active along with the infraspinatus and the subscapularis, which are muscles of the rotator cuff. So I'm going to group these together as well, along with the upper and lower serratus. And in the lower body, we find that we have a good amount of quad and hamstring activation along with the adductor magnus and the glute medius. And again, we see the abdominal obliques on this list. Two of the muscles we see popping up on this list a lot are the glutes and the pecs. These are two muscles we're going to make sure we emphasize a lot throughout our actual workout. It's pretty safe to say that there's a decent amount of hamstring and quad activation, along with some of the other muscles that play a big role in stabilizing the shoulder blade. So the exercises we do, we should make sure there's some level of shoulder control involved in this. Now you might not see some of the bigger muscles that you would be expecting to see, like the deltoids or the lat muscles. These are muscles that still are active, but they might not have a high enough level of activation to have made this list I just reviewed with you. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't work them. A well-rounded workout routine will have a good amount of inclusion of every muscle group. Now we're gonna head over to the gym and take you through a few exercises that will really step up your golf game. So let's do that now. 
All right guys, welcome to the gym. We're gonna run you through a few exercises, starting with lower body. I'm gonna try to give a brief overview of the form and what muscles we're targeting with these exercises. Now the weights that you do in the rep range is going to be specific for each person's goals, so I'm not going to generalize those. At the end of this video, I will link a video on rep ranges. Feel free to watch that for more specific info. The first exercise here is going to be a split squat. The split squat is done by posting your foot up onto either a bench or some type of step like I have here, dropping your back knee down. Now I debated which squat variation I wanted to include, but EMG data shows that this has the highest glute activation, which we know is super active throughout the golf swing. We also get a good amount of quad and a little bit of hamstring movement involved with this as well. For those who are new or struggling with balance, I recommend holding on to something and maybe not doing this weighted. Exercise number two is going to be a deadlift. Now, deadlifts get a lot of flack, but there's a lot of variations that you can mix into this and we don't have to lift super heavy. I like this movement because it incorporates so many muscle groups. We get our quads, hamstrings, glutes, erector spinae, all the way up into our back. We get some traps involved. This is another movement that's great for working on the explosiveness through your golf swing, especially in the lower body. For those who are new to deadlifting or weightlifting, something like this with a kettlebell or a dumbbell might be right up your alley. It's a simpler variation that might just be a little bit easier to pick up on. Getting into some upper body, we're gonna jump to the chest, which we saw in our EMG data is super active throughout that golf swing. This here is a pec deck or a fly machine, whatever your gym calls it. I chose this machine because it really allows you to get through the full range of motion. You can notice I do still have a slight bend on my elbows that allows to reduce strain on the bicep, but this is a great movement for really activating the pecs. For someone who doesn't have access to this type of machine or is maybe new to this, you can do flies laying on the ground with dumbbells like this here. Next movement is going to be reverse pec deck or reverse flies, whatever you want to call it. This movement here gets a lot of those muscles on the back side of our shoulder. This here will get the rear delts involved, the rhomboids, the middle traps, and a lot of those muscles that we discuss surrounding the shoulder blades. It's not an overly complicated movement here, although it is very challenging because these are pretty weak muscles. Now we're on to a mid row. This mid row is going to target the rhomboids, it's gonna target the lats, it's going to target the middle traps, a lot of muscles, again, surrounding that shoulder that helps in stabilization. And the emphasis while I do this movement is to focus on retracting my shoulders. A mid row like this, where it's not supporting your chest, allows for some erector spinae activation as well. For those who might not have access to that, something like this, a TRX row, might be a good alternative those that are beginning, this is definitely a good spot to start. You can increase your intensity by walking feet up or back. All right, I debated including this movement. This is called a half Turkish getup. Now you do wanna target both sides here, but we're gonna put the weight in our left hand. We're gonna straighten our right leg out with our left knee bent and our right arm out at a 45 degree angle. I know that's a lot of info, but you can pause that video and rewind if you need to get that form correct. We're gonna bring that elbow to the ground, extend up, onto our forearm here. I don't get off of my elbow. My elbow and hand are still in contact with the ground. I extend up and out. This is a good movement because we come across our body, so we get those obliques involved. We also get our erector spinae involved. We get our erectus abdominis involved, and this is a solid core movement. This is only half of the Turkish getup. I would not show you guys the full form. It gets way too complicated, but don't do this here. Don't come across your body. It puts our shoulder in a compromised position. And we wanna rely on those core muscles to help us get up. There are a ton more exercises I could have put on this list, but these that I included, I think are fundamental to everyone's golf specific training program. For example, I put flies on this list, but that doesn't mean it's the only chest exercise you should be doing. And I have other videos on golf specific exercises that are a little bit more in depth, and I'll link that in a playlist at the end. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Feel free to hit that like button if you found value and feel free to subscribe if you want weekly fitness content. And if you want, watch one of my other golf videos up here. We'll see you guys next time.